Yeah. Uh-huh. She was at this like debutante <laughs> thing and she was just eating them wings, throwing it back, oh, wing yeah. all over the face, drinking a beer or whatever the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. And the ladies just looking at her in horror. You know, this lady that's very bougie and, you know, the perfect woman. Mm-hmm. He, she looked at her in like horror and was like, Viola, chew like you have a secret. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, we can't even chew normally without people being like, why right. is she chewing like that? She's chewing guys- like a man. <laughs> That's a man. Like, leave us alone. I know. Why can't we just uh, eat? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, y'all. How you doing? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Taurus season. Yes. I don't know if we... Did we briefly talk about Taurus season in our last episode? Um... Because I know we filmed it like literally as the sun was about to go into Taurus. I feel like maybe we did wish them a happy Taurus season, but I don't think we really talked about it. I feel like I want to talk about it because clearly we love astrology. And if you're watching, you do too. Um, And it's a whole new season. The Mm energy is different. Mm -hmm. It's in the sign that the eclipses are going to be in this year. Yeah. We're in that season. So I'm sure Taurus season is going to feel a little different this year (laughs) than than other years. (laughs) Taurus and Scorpio season are just going to hit a little different. Yeah. Because the eclipses are in those signs. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like normally Taurus season is so grounding for me. But like with the eclipses this this year, it's going to shake shit up. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's not going to be as calming of a nature as I feel like it normally is, is what I'm really trying to get at. Yeah, I feel like (laughs) for me, Taurus season is like, it's nice because obviously it's Taurus and like you said, it's grounding, Mm -hmm. but it also opposes my son every year. Taurus is opposing Scorpio. So like, that's no different. I definitely always feel this pressure. Mm. I don't know of what, but this pressure during Taurus season. Mm. Um, And yeah, I don't know. I feel like, this Taurus season is a little different because also Uranus is in Taurus too. And it has been for, I believe, a couple of years now. But with the eclipses and Uranus in Taurus, like, it doesn't feel grounded at all. Like, it just feels like this is the season where shit's going to shift. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's interesting because when you think about Taurus as the archetype, like, they are so resistant to change. Oh, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? So the fact that it's, like, finally shaking shit up and you just yeah. said that, like, these placements have been there for a minute. Yeah. And it's finally changing. Like, to me, that means it's going to be, like, a shift. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. When Taurus finally decides, like, oh, I'm changing my mind, I feel like that's kind of a big thing. It's fucking revolutionary. Right? <laughs> it's like, oh, what? Like, whoa. Yeah. It's almost like you created a new fact, almost, for them. I mean, it, it's a paradigm <laughs> shift. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. And, you know, this is a PSA for Taurus and Scorpio. You know, I'll sprinkle in Leo and Aquarius in there, too, because they're fixed signs, too. But mostly Taurus and Scorpio, if you have been feeling anxious and if you've been into spirituality and astrology and you've been hearing about these eclipses and you're really scared of change and you, more than anyone, is fearful of what if change is bad. You know, that's why I don't like change. I like comfort. I like knowing what I know. Yeah. And if change happens, what if I don't like it? I don't do well with things I don't like. Right. That's why I stick to the shit I like. Right. You know? It works for them. Exactly. It works for them. You know? So if you are, you know, in that category, I just want to let you know that, like, you're going to be okay. Change is inevitable. Sometimes we need to be pushed to experience different levels in our lives. Yeah. You know, and, like, when you're doing the same thing, although you are comfortable, you will always, when you grow up, you will always regret that you didn't try new shit. Yeah. At the end of the day, you never look back and you're like, damn, I shouldn't have tried that. Because every time you try something new, it teaches you something. It teaches you something about yourself or life, you know? So if you're scared about, you know, this year because you keep hearing that there's going to be a lot of shifts and a lot of changes for you particularly, mm-hmm. I just want you to embrace it and find your peace in, within the chaos. I say this all the time. Like, you can't change what's happening outside of you. Mm-hmm. Like, you just can't at all. No. But, like, this is the perfect opportunity for you to finally tell yourself, no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. Like, no matter what happens, I'm going to find ways to keep myself grounded and happy. Because at the end of the day, shit's going to shit's gonna be crazy this year for you. You know, not in a bad way, but just different. Yeah. When the eclipses are happening and signs that affect your birth chart, affect your personal planets, you're going to feel them. So just let it happen because the more you try and fight it, 
the more you realize that you actually have no fight in this at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. Because, like, it's going to happen with or without you. If Ooh. it's going to happen without you, like, it's still happening with that you. Part. They're just going to be fucking pulling you and you're going to get dragged to your next destination. Yo. You, do you want to sit on a private jet and be taken beautifully and gracefully into the next chapter of your life? Or do you want to be pulled by a bike on <laughs> cement floor? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like, you want to, for this change to happen as gracefully as possible. So that's why I say just go with the flow yeah. instead of fighting it, even though it's in your nature to fight change. So that is my PSA. No, honestly, that's such great advice because otherwise it will drag you. Like, don't think that you are going to be able to... The universe is powerful. Right. Don't think that you're going to be able to out... How do I say? Outplay. Like, yes, outplay, outsmart, like yeah. what change needs to come. Destiny. What needs to I hate evolve. to be cheesy yeah. like that. You can't outplay destiny, baby. No. Destiny's going to happen with you, Mm-mm. and it's still going to happen without you. Mm-hmm. So might as well just let it happen. Right. I feel like isn't it better to almost have like a – to have a sense of calmness or like kind of a, a smile on your face as, yes, shit is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit is popping off, but – when you look back on it, do you always want to remember that you were upset or you were resistance, yeah. resistant to what was happening? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what I think about sometimes. It's like I don't want to look back on the times where, yeah, I was upset and I was struggling and I was like, fuck, I was such a terror in that yeah. time too. You know? Like yeah. I want to be proud of my, for lack of better terms, my dark moments too where I was still true to my – self and I was still pushing myself too to be the best person that I could be like I'm not saying that's easy Mm -hmm. but you feel better looking back on it when you when you push yourself in that way you know no totally I also feel like you can go further if you let go yes you know what I mean like even just thinking about it in terms of like physics I think it's physics (laughs) (laughs) like if something is heavy like you could push it but you're not going to be able to push it as far as something that's light you know so if you are someone that is flexible and you're allowing these changes to happen to you well the universe wants to put you all the way over there so if you're feeling light and flexible the universe can bounce you there real quick Mm -hmm. but if you are like holding on to your reality right now so tight the universe is still going to push you, but you're not going to get as far to your destiny as you could have if you were more flexible. Yeah. If you were more light, if you were more free, if you were more willing yeah. rather than fighting. Yeah. And can I be real? Like, this is so true. And I feel like when the harder you fight it, the harder the lesson is going to be. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's like the harder the downfall almost. Yeah. It's true. It really <laughs> It honestly like it's gonna really like is. Fuck you up like even harder if you would have just been like, okay, like this sucks and it's rough, but I'm gonna keep going through it. Cause you're almost being delusional when you fight it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're like, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. Meanwhile, it's fucking happening. And then when it <laughs> happens, you're like, what the fuck? It happened. Yeah. Like it was happening, like with or without you, like I said. So yeah. you should have just opened your eyes and saw that change was happening. You know, as humans, it's funny because we're so powerful. But also, we have to understand that we're so powerless when it comes to destiny and, like, certain shit that's just meant to happen in life. Yeah. Whatever your purpose is, you are kind of powerless when it comes to that. Because that is your purpose. And hopefully sometime during your time, during your time on this earth, you will reach your purpose and you will finally start living that life and that reality where you're living your purpose. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes when you are just telling yourself, no, 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 you're almost telling yourself, like, that you're greater than than Mother Earth. You're greater than the yeah. universe. Like the universe is, smarter. is very powerful. <laughs> no. You are powerful, amazing, but the universe is is very powerful. Mm-hmm. So even if you think that you can fight it and you can hold on to the things that made you feel grounded and that made you feel comfortable, I feel like the universe is just going to hit you on its way out like, told you. Right. <laughs> No, truly, I think of it like a almost like the universe in the sense being my mother or my father and that like, you know, when I'm still in their household and they're like, you can try and fight against this, but I still know what's best and you're going to do yeah. and move how I say at the end of the day. And it yeah. is for your best interest. You know, I feel like that's the other thing, like even about parents in this sense, in this analogy, like yeah. a lot of the times when we were younger, we're like, you don't know shit. Like... <laughs> What do you know about life is low-key what I really thought. No, same. But I'm like, you're so now, close-minded. Have you even right. lived? Like, have you even right. lived? Like, they've been here much longer than me, but in my head, I'm like, I know everything. Right. But now that I'm older, I'm like, you, y'all were trying to protect me. Yeah. You were trying to teach me something, just like the universe is going to be doing with y'all 
in this eclipse. Oh, you know, for sure. And you may be like, my mama don't know shit. My daddy don't know shit. AKA the universe. Yeah. But they do. They do. And they're going to teach you a lesson either way. They really are. <laughs> they are. Because it's, we're all going to get a lesson. Like, yeah. Eclipse season is all about that. Like change is happening. And, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully you like what happens after. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't, if you don't like the changes that happen, either way, they had to happen. Mm-hmm. So make your peace with it. For sure. And if you don't like that change, like you can manipulate it to work to your favor. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Don't always think that what happened is your forever point. You know what I mean? Like if let's say you're – for me, for example, I finally decided I'm going to leave the job that I'm at, mm-hmm. right? And – That's not like, yes, there are some hard times that go with it and it's sad that that is ending, but there are new opportunities that are going to come with it. You know what I mean? And it's like, yes, be sad that things are ending, but also realize this is a new opportunity for you. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that energy? Yeah. You know, and that's powerful energy too. It is. Another piece of advice I would give to people during eclipse season and, you know, the effects of afterwards is... To not play the victim. Like, don't Mm. tell yourself, why is this happening to me? Like, (sighs) life is all about change. You know, sometimes really bad things need to happen for change to happen. But Mm -hmm. sadly, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Sometimes good things happen for change to happen. For sure. But it's literally a balance, you know, that yin and yang. It can't always be good things that lead to change, you know. So I just want everyone to, again, take your power back and understand that, like, when these things are happening to you, you don't have to be so powerless. You don't have to yeah. be like, why is this happening to me? It's happening for you. There's a yes. difference between it happening to you and it happening for you. For you. You know, you get your power back in that sense. Yeah. You know, like this is happening for me, so that can happen and then this can happen and then ultimately I can have this dream that I've been wanting forever. Yes. Think about it like that in Ooh. that sense. You yes. Know? Not all parts of the journey are always nice, but they need to happen for you to get to your destination. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Because I feel like for me too, when I think of like eclipses that have hit me the hardest, I really didn't want to let go of something. Mm -hmm. And the universe was like, it's done. Bye bye. Yeah. Let it go. You could have said bye slowly <laughs> in the right. past year you could have where I was on your own time. giving you signs that it was time to let go, but you decided and you knew in your heart to was- pretend that it wasn't ending mm-hmm. and you just, this whole time, were feeding yourself lies and the other situation lies thinking that like, well, no, it's not goodbye. It's been goodbye. And now I'm going to pull them out of your life and now you don't even get a goodbye. Right. It feels abrupt <laughs> now. <laughs> and you're like, wait, I didn't have time to process. Like you were dragging your feet for yeah. a minute. Yeah. And then the universe slapped that ass and said, right. it's done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get out of there. <laughs> Loki, I feel like it's kicking shit out. No, it is. It's, <laughs> it's like, move. <laughs> I just imagine way. like, yeah, that's eclipse season. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm sitting there tied up and the universe walks in and it kicks away all the things that are not meant to be in my life anymore. And I'm like, no. Right. And the universe is like, nah, bye. Right. Because I feel like, you know, we talked about how it's obviously going to hit fixed signs more. <laughs> yes. But if everybody's going to feel this in a sense, I mean, everybody's going to feel it, yeah. you know, in the sense that something's going to leave and they'll be like, where? What? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. And you're going to be all confused. And then you're going to remember this podcast episode. And, and you'll be like, oh, shit. My girls told me. Right. And we did. We tried and to we tell And we always you. will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was driving in my car uh-huh. today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Nice for What by Drake came on. Oh, and I was like, you know, just like really in a mood where I was really feeling this song. And for whatever reason, I'm sorry, I started thinking about my mother. <laughs> <laughs> And how as a child, like, and really not even just my mom, but, like, I feel like everyone around me really always tried to be, like, you need to be nice. You need to be docile. You need to make sure, like, everyone else is okay before yourself. You know what I mean? And I obviously hate that so much. It's so toxic. Now, and unfortunately, though, it still lingers 
in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? It's still that annoying voice that talks pretty loud. <laughs> she's getting quieter, but she still talks because, like, that was a lot of my – I mean, that was all of my upbringing. Yeah, she's still there. A she's part still of there. her still lives within you. Right. And I just want people to know, like, there is such a thing as being too nice, obviously. And us, especially as women, we're not put on this earth to be nice, okay? Like, I don't even really want that ever to be an adjective that is used to describe me. Yeah. You know, like, sure, I'm kind. Like, I get that. I'm friendly. But I want to be more than that. I want to be remembered as something as someone not who is just nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? I absolutely know what you mean. I feel like people, you know, as women especially, we are known to be nurturing. So yeah. I feel like the the problem is that they confuse being nurturing with being nice. Yes. Like as a woman, and I'm sure other women can agree with me, we are really good at nurturing people. Yeah. Emotionally being available to them. Not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> But usually we are a little bit more sensitive to other people. Yeah. Um, and I feel like sometimes they use that against us, they, the patriarchy. Also, women that have been taught this, you know, being nice to everyone thinks since they were young. So they yeah. think it's the truth, even though they were told by someone older than them. And then it becomes a toxic cycle within yeah. generations where yeah. women just, you know, forget about themselves and continue to put other people above them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like at the end of the day, we just have to realize that, like, you could still be nurturing to the people that you love and be a nurturing person and be a compassionate person and you could still be selfish. Yes. And you could still do the things you need to do to make yourself happy mm -hmm. and prioritize those things before you choose to be nurturing to other people. And I think yes. that's the problem. People expect women to just be nice to everyone all the time. And like if you're seen as a woman who says what she wants before she asks other people what they want, like you're seen as rude almost. Yes, um, exactly. You know, and I don't like that because when a woman's, uh, when a man speaks up and says what he wants, like, oh, he's so assertive. Like he knows what he wants. Like, no, I'm assertive too. Right. I love myself too. I deserve to say what I want before asking other people what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Or just putting myself first before I go and do everything I can to make everyone else comfortable. Yeah. Um, and it sucks. What you're saying, it really sucks because it it affects our daily lives. Even as women who understand the problem within this, it yeah. still affects us. Because when we do yes. go out of our way to be selfish, you know, good selfish, mm -hmm. um, we feel guilty. The guilt. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, we can't even do what we want to do to make ourselves Ugh. happy without feeling like we're doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the part I don't like. And if I have kids, that is what I'm going to instill in the daughters I have, if I have daughters, is do not feel bad for asking for what you want. Do not feel bad yeah. for feeling powerful and being expressive. Like, don't feel bad about just going after the things you want boldly, saying mm -hmm. how you feel boldly. You are not weird for that. That doesn't make you a weird woman, yeah. you know, like, cause I feel like that's what it is. Like yeah. if you're a woman who's powerful and who just speaks up, you feel like you're doing too much. Yeah. You know, cause there's other women who know their place. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. I don't want to know my place. I am who I am. Right. And if that's called big dick energy, then call me that. <laughs> <laughs> Truly though. I just want like all of my ladies to be freed from the shackles of like, having to be nice, like having to be proper, you know what I mean? Or having to like fit into what proper, having to fit into what I cry. other people say for yeah. them or for women or what is a good woman, you know what I mean? Because like I was really thinking about this the other day and like truly I feel like my opinion of what is a strong, great woman, the type of women that I love is very different than what kind of I was raised to, or yeah, taught like what women should be, you know? Yeah. And I, I feel like I go back and forth of like, obviously I feel empowered by my own views, but then I have this like little nagging feeling in the back of like, oh, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure this is right? People are going to judge you. Everyone's looking. Everyone's judging. Yeah. And I just, Everyone's going to know you're that kind of girl. Whatever the fuck that means. Whatever the fuck that means. I'm like, I am that fucking kind of girl. I'm and like, I what girl is that? Hate. I am Sarah. I right. am Sarah. Why do I need to compare? You are Maya. Why do we need to right. compare 
like, you know, what kind of women we are. Because yeah. the patriarchy and toxic women in our lives forced us to, obviously. But it sucks. It sucks yeah. because we are constantly comparing the way we're coming off. Yeah. Because we want, a small part of us wants to be, wants to be seen as the kind of women that is acceptable. The kind of woman that we, you know, that is like in movies. You know what I mean? No, like, yeah. <laughs> you know? I, like, she's perfect. She's a great mom. God. She's a great lover. She doesn't talk too much. She doesn't have too many opinions. She chews like she has a secret. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Not her chewing like she got a secret. It just reminded me when you're talking about manners of that scene. Yeah. And she's the man where she's like in that, what is it called? Like, what is it called? The kissing booth? No, no, Which no. One? It's like that event that they do. Oh, the debutante. Yeah. Uh -huh. She was at this like debutante <laughs> thing and she was just eating them wings, throwing it back, oh, wing yeah. all over the face, drinking a beer or whatever the fuck it was. Mm -hmm. And the lady's just looking at her in horror. You know, this lady that's very bougie and, you know, the perfect woman. Mm -hmm. he, she looked at her in like horror and was like, Viola, chew like you have a secret. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, we can't even chew normally. Without people being like, why right. is she chewing like that? She's chewing like a man. <laughs> That's a man. Like, leave us alone. I know. Why can't we just uh, eat? I get, I get hungry too. Honestly, this just fucking reminded me and fucking annoys me. I also hate when men make comments about how much we eat. Luckily, like, I'm not, I don't have any people like that close in my life anymore. But yeah. like, like, at dinner parties, I would remember one time at work, I had to check someone. Because like... I was getting food, and mm -hmm. this other girl was getting food too. And he looked at us and was like, oh, you guys are like hungry today. And I'm like, why are you even looking at my plate? I said that to him. And he was like, "Like, please don't make comments about what I eat. Yeah, ever. what the fuck? Like, but that's not the only time I've no, noticed for that. Sure. No, men, men love commenting. Do that. Like, oh, she hungry today. Oh, she can put it down. Like, why are you talking about how much I eat? This literally It's so weird, but you don't do that to men. Right. It happened to us at the restaurant the other day. Oh, yeah. It really but did. But they were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, so that's it? Like, no, we no, still have two we, more orders. Right. <laughs> well, on entree. No. What the fuck? But, like, it's so weird. And it sucks because obviously society has, more specifically for food, made women feel like, you know, they have to have a certain type of body standard yeah. and to feel ashamed over what they eat. And, like, our, you know, body images are fucked because of yeah. society. Yeah. So, again, it's annoying because it's like, how are you going to comment about it when you know women struggle with this all the time? Yes. Just and leave us alone. Yes. <laughs> and you know, okay, all of this kind of just connected for me in a way. You know how you were saying earlier you want to teach your daughters to like stand strong mm -hmm. in their truth? It's like, yes, it's standing strong, but also when they're going to meet resistance because oh, of sure. the society we live in. For it's sure. almost like double down. Like it I want to teach them to double down on it. Yeah. When, when they meet, when they get met with resistance, you're like, oh no, you being really fucking weird then. It means, you know, it I means want you're you doing to... something right. Right. You know, I want there's you to... a process to this lesson. Yes. First you're bold, <laughs> then people will be mad. You continue to be bolder. Right. And you tell them to go suck a dick. Exactly. <laughs> you know, different words because they're children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I did in the principal's office. Right. And what are you going to do about it? Be like, bring her, bring the other mom in here. No, let's let, me have a let me teach you something about life. <laughs> <laughs> Kick the principal out of the room. Oh my god! I'm going to sit in the principal's desk. <laughs> <laughs> <It's heaven>. So. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, so fun. Truly. So excited. Normal parents excited to take their kids to Disneyland. Me teaching them about the patriarchy right. and how to crush it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Truly, I'm excited because that's going to be very adorable. <laughs> okay, so do you remember that friendship red flags list from We the Urban on Instagram? Yes, I do. Okay, so we have a few more okay, and we're going to talk about them. All right, so you ready? Yes. Okay. The next one is, it says, pay attention to the conditional friends that disappear when they're in relationships, only to come back when it's over, seeking your emotional labor. Ooh, not your emotional labor. I mean, it's work. <laughs> it's work putting someone back together Jeez. after someone crushed them down and made them insecure, or cheated on them, or, or just, you know what I mean? Just ghosted the fuck out of them, like whatever it may be. Yeah. You are helping your friend put themselves back together yeah and if you 
get broken up with, you would hope that your friends are helping you put yourself back together if you were a good enough friend to them right. during the relationship. Yeah. No, yeah. It is labor. You ain't broke about that. It's work. You ain't get up about and that. work. <laughs> your friend after getting jumped, get up and work, bitch. Put me back together. Put me back together. <laughs> no, truly, though. Truly, though. And I feel like Loki, it feels like extra work, especially when they disappeared. And Loki, I feel like it's extra work because you haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. And then they got to catch you up on the whole relationship. Oh, and it's like, sure. you got to do like extra work you know what i'm also, saying you gotta read between the lines it you gotta is. fill shit in because it's like first of all who the fuck are you anymore i don't know like, I, i'm sorry to put it like that but I see that you're... i'm gonna throw a little shade at the beginning of you asking for my help i gonna be like oh where you been look who came crawling back maybe i won't go yeah. that far. <laughs> in my head i would think that one oh um, my god you know because yeah like you just ditched me and yeah. like there you were in love and now but, like it's <laughs> fucked up that like you need me now yeah huh, baby <laughs> you know what i mean because at the end of the day like you said yes you have to read in between the lines you have to do that extra extra work because how do you also know that they're not lying this is why it's important yeah Ooh. this is why it's important to have your friends throughout the relationship because actually your friend can help you out more if they know everything that's been going on, yes. the good and the bad. They can help check things. Exactly. If you haven't been around them at all and you're like, well, he dumped me and then you just have the story of why he dumped you, your friend really has no way of actually healing you because she doesn't know really what happened. Yeah. It's all kind of from I need to know the full story. Her point, their point of view. Yeah. You know what I mean? And summarize too. It's not like, Obviously, obviously you were in love in the beginning of the relationship. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and I feel like at the end, especially when this type of friend is hitting you up, they're like, oh my God, like they were the worst. I'm so sorry I didn't call you. Like you tried to tell me. Ew, you know what I mean? The voice is a little higher pitch. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Use your normal of voice. Of course it is. Of course it <laughs> is. You fucking liar. Um, <laughs> it's that guilt. No, it is. <laughs> it is. Higher. First of all, talk normally. Thanks. Right. And then... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, I'm not fucking no. around anymore. Okay. Because this don't happen to me anymore. So but now also, like I'm really thinking about how I would react. But also, I'm actually triggered by the voice thing that you're saying because, and also something that yeah, you said they're putting on their white girl voice. And they'll victimize <laughs> themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I I agree. People tend to do that when they're victimizing themselves a lot. They're like, mm, feel almost done for me. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you know, I feel like we have matured enough in our lives or in friendships too, where Maybe if you would have talked to us like when we were younger, no matter what happened, we're going to be like, oh, like it's his fault. But I feel like yeah. now we are in that stage in life where that. if I'm going to be a good friend to you, I need to be completely honest with you. Yeah. Right? So right. like if you're just doing your victim thing and we haven't talked at all, like of course it's it's nice when you are in these immature relationships where no matter what, everyone's on your side. But like when you are in a mature friendship – your girl gots to know everything. If I'm going to help you, I got to know it all. So I could yeah. be like, okay, so he dumped you. But like, how are we going to make sure this doesn't happen again? Because right. we need to do some self-evaluation too. Yeah. It's not just fuck him, hate him. Like, it's no. not just about that. But no. if you haven't been with me in a long time, again, I don't know you. Right. I don't know if I trust you. I don't know if I trust your story. I don't know. And I'm sorry if that's fucked up, but it's the truth. No, and it's. I think it's fair to say because like, again – we don't actually know how they were acting in the relationship. Yeah. You know? And I feel like we are at that age now where I'm not going to pretend that you were always a perfect angel. And I just have to say it. I know that you're fucking toxic as fuck and codependent. Because if you just dropped all your friends to be in a relationship, yeah, it probably wasn't healthy. Ooh. I'm not surprised that it's over. Yeah. That part. That part. It is very immature to throw yourself just completely in a relationship and forget about the other ones yeah you know what i mean like yeah especially if you had strong relationships before i understand if maybe you weren't close to anybody or something yeah, like that's that fine. Like, but, but are you talking like, you're, you know you're, you're talking about like you know we're talking about here friends you know what i mean this is about friendship red flags so like yeah. you left your friend this your homie yeah. you know like that's weird to me did you not value our friendship then yeah and then i have questions about yes even further what do you value? How do you value the people in your relationships? Because yeah. I know that you didn't value me, so did you not value this person too? I got questions. Yeah. It's it's very scary, to be honest with yeah. you. It is. It is. It is. Because, you know, now they expect you to 
free up some time for them when you have gotten used to not having that friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's selfish in that way too. Like, well, you just ghosted. So yes, I have other priorities in my life now. I'm not just yeah. going to hold this space open for you all the time for whenever you feel like coming back and going. That to me sounds like I'm, I don't respect myself and I don't value yeah. myself. So I'm sorry you're going through this, but also you haven't been a very good friend to me. So why should I do that emotional labor for you? For sure. You know? No, it's like the person has to be very careful how they're approaching their friend because y'all could come off so selfish and self-centered in that moment. Like, yeah, yeah, how dare you demand someone's time who you've ignored? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get to do that. (laughs) No, you don't. And it's the thing is, like, I have plenty of quality friends that won't do that to me. So if if that were to happen, of course I'm going to let you know, hey, like, this is not how I roll in my group anymore. Like, yeah. I have people who value me and who I value. So I, I hope you figure it out. I don't know if maybe our paths will cross in the future, but yeah. currently um, I don't like the way I've been treated in this relationship, and I just don't see a future for us. Yeah. I hope you find someone that can be there for you. Yeah. That's that's what I would say, truly. For sure, because mature – people also it's it's different in every situation yeah but like if i had a friend and that happened right now that's my response to it yeah you know for sure i just i don't see it happening with my best friends so if it happens with no. a friend i'm just gonna be like, like i bah, really don't need bah. you that bad <laughs> since you bah. have treated me like this yeah yeah and even and if it happened <laughs> with the best friend god forbid i would be like Oh, we'd be fighting. We'd be fighting? <laughs> I'd be so No, this isn't and no, I, like, we're ignoring each other and then it, it happens. Like, no, we're fighting. Like, bitch, you don't make time for me. No, like, you know literally, what I, mean? I would be, like, on your line. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's just, I don't. It, Sending it, ghost it, emojis. No, literally. Like, no, I'm going to haunt you in your dreams. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm going to be in your sleep. Like, bitch, call me when you wake up. <laughs> right. I'm a needy best friend, y'all. I'm a yeah. needy. I mean, I'm available, so I expect to be around people who are also available to me, you know? Like, I know I have a lot of emotional availability for the people I love. Mm -hmm. So if that's not reciprocated, it feels a little unfair to me. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I, why would I give when, this is the thing, like, the friendship is not being met in the same way that I'm giving the friendship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I feel like the other part, yeah, I feel like the other part about this is like, when that friend disappears, you're like, fuck, like, I miss them. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, sure. it sucks for you, too. And, like, you, that may have been your partner for a while. Like, you may have been going out yeah. or studying together. Whatever it may be that y'all were doing together, that was obviously your friend. You were bonded in some way. And then that was taken away from you when you when they got into a relationship. And they ultimately said, in my opinion, that what y'all were doing wasn't val- as valuable anymore yeah. as to what this partner was bringing. And don't get me wrong. Like... Your partner brings something else to you in a relationship, obviously. That's why you're with them, you know? But Sex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but your friendships provide things for you too, you know? And I just think it's so weird when people just get only caught up in their lover because then I'm like, mm, mm. also, I just feel like it's kind of boring. Like, I want to be talking to my friends too, yeah. you know what I mean? My friends provide different things so- for me than my man does, yeah. you know what I mean? And I value all of these things different, differently. Yeah. You know what? I, I need all of these things. Yeah. My man can't give me everything I want. Right. Like, you know, it's just not possible. No. And, and my friends to. aren't going to give me everything I want. Right. My family's not going to give me everything I want. That's why it's important right. to have all these different relationships in life. Because also, on the other hand, it doesn't put too much pressure on one person to right. give you everything you want. Like, that's just not possible either. Yeah. You know, and I also want to talk about the fact that when you were talking about it, it reminded me when your friend has to make amends with the fact that you haven't been available it's kind of a breakup for them. Like, yes. they have to go through this heartbreak of, like, shit, my friend kind of ditched me. Yes. Like, you know yes. what I mean? That shit hurts. It really fucking that hurts. Fucking like, hurts. you're making your peace with it, and you're like, damn, like you said, I really miss them, but fuck, I got to get through it. Like I said, you find time to do other things. And then when they come back, it's like, well, bitch, I fucking <laughs> literally had to heal myself because you ditched me. Yes. And now you're back, and I just need to be the bestest of friend and, like, heal you. Like, no, I'm not there. I'm not right. there right now. Right. And can I say, Loki, it's also extra hard. Like, another layer to this is, like, obviously yeah. you're happy that we think that they found love. hmm Right? You know what I mean? So it's like, I can't be so mad that they ditched me. Like, obviously yeah. I'm mad that you ditched me, but also I'm happy that you found love. But then when they get broken up with and they're like, 
he wasn't shit. And now you're like, oh my God, I loved our friendship and I'm so sorry I neglected it. I'm like, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think there is literally, <laughs> you have to understand, there's a difference between someone or a friend getting into a relationship and them not being available as much as before. Right. Or someone who gets into a relationship and you just never see them again. Like, yes. there's a difference between those two things. I am super sensitive to a friend getting into a new relationship. I get it. That honeymoon stage is fucking lit. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, of like, course. Like, I know you're living it up. You just want to be with, be with that person all the time. Like, you're living your best life. I get that. But if you don't make time for me at all, all yeah because you just always expect me to be there right always cancel you got it wrong honey i don't wait around for people yeah i'm not that scorpio no more Mm -mm. (laughs) for sure no i I value myself too much yeah for people to think i'm always there no matter how they treat me yeah there's only a couple of times you're gonna cancel on me these days you know what i mean where i'm like okay yeah it's disrespectful you know what i mean yeah it's disrespectful yeah and if you love yourself enough, you will tell the person, that is disrespectful. I will not accept that behavior. Right. Mm-hmm. The next one, I'm laughing because <laughs> it makes me angry and I'm about to clown on people. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. It says that when they constantly use you as the butt of the joke for the entertainment of oh, others. fuck no. Because, like, my thing is, what's so fucking funny? No. Like, what's so fucking it funny? It ain't me. No, it ain't, it ain't me. me. And usually, I swear Bro. to God, it's these pick doing uh-huh. it when a group of boys is around. When a group of guys is around, all of a sudden, these pick are comedians. Oh like, my God. oh, all of a sudden, you got jokes. Right. Like, you're really funny. Bitch, I've never heard you say a joke before. Right. Ever. In your life. I didn't know you were out here trying to entertain people. Wow. I didn't know you wanted to be an entertainer. You should have told me. I would have been there for you. <laughs> I'm getting hot. I'm hot. hot. Literally. I had a friend like this and truly, fuck, truly, I feel like she hated me. Like, there's no way you actually liked me and, like, considered me an actual best friend if you constantly just couldn't wait for the opportunity to, like, make a joke about me. Yes. And, like, usually it was, like, when we were drinking because that's when she would get ballsy. Of course. And And everyone's defenses are down. It's true. But, like, it just honestly bugged me because, like, I like to make people laugh too. Yeah. I try not to do real it. Life funny. Yeah. She's really funny. She's <laughs> yeah. real life funny. You know I, what you I mean? Know, I, mean. I like to make people laugh. Yeah. But I, I just thought it was so funny that these girls, because there was funny. two ex friends that I had that were like this, they would never be funny. <laughs> but all of a sudden, when boys were around, they would say these like really outrageous jokes about me. I know it happened to you too. Uh-huh. And it happened to my other friend that we were friends with, you know? It just, it really bugged me because I definitely felt like it was their way to like make themselves feel better and to like kind of put themselves at a higher value than you. Like, look how funny I am. And like, look, I can put her in her place. Like, if you don't like your friend, just say that. You don't got to right. make fun of your friend in front of people to openly show how much you don't like them. No. And then play it off as, well, I was just kidding. It was just a joke. It, it wasn't, wasn't that deep. Don't take joke. it so seriously. It wasn't a joke. I feel like literally. There's a difference. Yes. For whatever reason, they saw or felt that there was an opportunity for them to get a leg up. Yeah. They had a crush on somebody. They wanted exactly. to, you know, whatever it may be, they felt like they could go ahead and like shoot this little shot. And to me, it's like, you are like, why? Why? You're not. That's, why do I have to funny. be your muse? I'm not like. <laughs> All of a sudden, when normally too, okay, this is the other part. When normally too, I feel like they're kissing your ass. Oh, yeah. So it kind of comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, all of a sudden, you want to be mean and funny when this is literally not your shtick at all. But as soon as like a man's around or somebody who you're trying to impress, you go ahead and act like this. Yeah. You know what? You're so right because literally right after it would happen and like the people weren't in the room anymore, we were somewhere together without people. They would like kiss ass just to make sure we're kiss just to make ass. sure we're good. Exactly. Just to make sure we're good. Cause they know what they did. Right. You know what I mean? And that's why and I we're say not too. good. No, you, we're not. That's why you up here trying to kiss my ass. Cause you feel my wrath. You feel me looking at you like, where the hell did that even come from? Like, where did that come from? And you know I'm probably gonna ask you. <laughs> truly. Truly. And it it hurts my feelings too, because it's like To me, whenever this happened to me, I was like maybe going to meet a new boy or like something new and exciting was happening, right? Where I was a little anxious maybe even. So I really almost felt like 
they were taking advantage of me in that time. Yeah. They saw that I was excited. Maybe I was a little nervous, whatever it was. And they were like, let me just take Maya down a few notches. She's feeling herself too much. Right. I think that's literally what it is too. Or we're like, you think you're the shit? Or like, oh. You know what and I mean? And who are you to tell me that I'm not? Like, <laughs> if, if I'm feeling myself and I'm feeling confident and I think I'm the shit, like, shit, I'm probably going to be giving you that energy too. Don't you want that good energy? You want me to be insecure just like you? Like, that doesn't make sense. That's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> No, I feel like truly it's like a moment of jealousy, you know, like they saw yeah. whatever opportunity he had, the man, whatever, mm-hmm. like whatever was happening. And they're like, oh, let me try and fuck this up for her. Let me try and steal it's, this for I her. I think you said it perfectly. Well, it's definitely a power grab. Yeah. It is. You know, like if you can't take your power, it's not even back because we weren't taking their power. No, no, if you no, can't feel powerful and comfortable <laughs> in your own skin without putting someone else down, like, I, yeah, I probably don't want to be your friend. Right. Like, there's plenty of personalities out here these days that are just straight up mean girls. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like, they're just mean. You're not funny. You're just mean. And at the end of the day, if you think you're relatable by, like, making fun of your friends or just, like, ragging on people all the time, like, I yeah, I probably don't want to be your friend. I want to laugh about stupid shit. Right. I want to laugh about dumb shit. Or I want to laugh about shit that... That you can't, like, tie back to a person and make them feel shitty. You know what I mean? No, for sure. And even in this sense, like, don't get me wrong. I can laugh at myself. Yeah. You know? But, like, there's a time and a place. And I know when you are purposely trying to put me down and make me look like a fool. Let's be honest. You know? I need consistency. I can laugh at myself. If you're the kind of person that's always joking with me. Right. And we're always joking. Don't get me wrong. I don't want that mean jokes. But like if we're joking and then you make a joke, like obviously I'm not going to look at you funny. Right. But if you're never the type to be clowning on people and joking and all of a sudden in front of a new group, you make a joke (laughs) that is directed towards me, of course I'm going to feel like, wait, that's not consistent. Like that was weird. Yeah. That was weird. Like are you being mean? Like what are you you trying to do? Where did that come from? Who are you trying to impress in this instance? Yeah. Because that's also where I think it's, like, coming from. I'm like, who the fuck are you trying to impress? Yeah. By putting yeah. me down. Yeah. Because what do, what does that person really gain in that moment when you brought them there, when that's your friend? What the they, fuck do they gain? <laughs> attention. Exactly. Yeah. They want attention. Yeah. They want to take the attention off of you. Yeah. And, like, uh, that That should so already prove weird. to you that this is, this is not a good friendship. It's toxic. Exactly. If they even feel like when you're around, they can't get attention, it's weird. Uh-uh. Like, it has nothing to do with you, obviously, because that just means that, you know, they're still a little bit insecure. They're figuring mm-hmm. themselves out. Like, that has nothing to do with you. You can't control that. But you can look at that person and be like, okay, this is someone that's, like, deeply insecure. And yeah. if I stay in this friendship with them chances are something similar is going to happen again and i'm going to feel shitty even though i know what's happening because they're projecting and they're a little weird and insecure it's still going to affect me so maybe i should just walk away from this friendship because they've shown me how they really feel about me yes and this is an old old saying (laughs) there's a little truth behind every just kidding Oh, you know what I'm saying? So uh, like, I agree. They may be saying like, oh, it's just a joke. No. No, that's how they really feel. They just they said never... it in a way where it can't be taken too seriously. <laughs> right. So you don't actually have, have to have a conversation about it. Exactly. But they could still express how they really feel about you. Mm-hmm. And they're hoping that because they just kind of slid it in there that yeah. you will ignore it. And most people do. Yeah. But also most people that are making those jokes, they have a tendency to gaslight you afterwards. This is facts. And make you feel like you're doing too much and that it wasn't even like that. Like, why are you acting out like that? Like, again, it was just a joke. Like, they will usually (laughs) gaslight you afterwards. So like I said, again, you can call them out, but I do suggest to just end the friendship. Because truly, it's just too much. Teaching people how to love themselves, you are not a therapist. No. Uh, No. No, it's too much work. That emotional labor, not for me. No. (laughs) Once again. Once again, not for me. (laughs) (laughs) Truly, truly. Oh, my gosh. Okay, this just made me think of something else. Oh, Lord. Though, of, like, how you're actually supposed to shut down a gaslighter. Because I feel like sometimes people be gaslighting me. (laughs) I'm like, what? I think that I can... 
I don't oh, so know. So you'd be like in a profession because I'm like I would just be like you're gaslighting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean even even sometimes in a friendship sense, like our not friendship, but like yeah. whatever it may yeah. be, like I feel like I'm being gaslit, right? And I don't I don't just say like I think you're gaslighting me because it takes me. I feel like it takes me a little bit longer. They're yeah. just talking over me, and if I think that you know maybe I actually did something wrong, like I'll kind of let them yeah do that, and then in afterwards I'm like fuck like they just they gaslit the fuck out of me yeah. and I was in the right and I yeah. just they manipulated me to like stand down you yeah. know what I mean and there I can think of a couple of times in the past few years honestly where that has happened to me and I want to be better at being like yeah you're gaslighting me and then either just walking away or like I don't even know like how the fuck do you shut down a gaslighter yeah you know I would just you know I feel like the best thing to do is to just, in the most obviously calm way, as calm as you can, let them know you're not going to tell me how to feel. Yeah. Because I think most of the time a gaslighter is literally taking away your feelings that you just described, right? They're taking away your experience Mm -hmm. by telling you that's not real. Like, And I think the best way is just let them know it is very much real and you're not going to tell me that my experience isn't the way that I saw it. Like, you're not going to take that away from me. I know what I experienced. I know what I felt. This was it. If you don't agree, cool. We can take take some time apart to sit on it, but you're not going to change the way that I just described my experience. Yeah. You know? Because that's what they try to do. No, they do. They try to change it. For me, if somebody talks enough, I'll be like, okay, this is a whole bunch of new information and you confused the fuck out of me. So now, yeah, okay. You know, and I feel like that happens for a lot of people. And I know that I'm a, you know, like I'm a very strong willed mm-hmm. person. But totally. for me with gaslighting, like I really do get lost in it. Like yeah. I, I even, I don't know what it is, but like sometimes even when I'm like, is this, is this happening? Yeah. Like I can't stop it. I yeah. truly can't. And it's like, do you just, do I just walk away? I feel like no, walking away isn't just the right answer either, you know, because like I'm trying to be better at being like, well, why, you don't you, up? why don't you just be honest? I feel like what you said was perfect too. You could literally just be like, well, you're kind of confusing me right now. Yeah. And I need some time to really understand my feelings. Yeah. You know, like honesty is usually always the best policy. Yeah. Like there's actually nothing wrong with saying that. Like, okay, that's your experience, but it's kind of confusing me and my feelings. And I kind of need some time apart to figure out how I'm feeling now that I know what you were feeling. Yeah. No, you're so right. I feel like I'm just so... You want a when so, I'm lost you can't in the want moment, a solution right away. Yeah. When you're being gaslit, you need you need that space. Yeah. You know? To you figure out what your thoughts it. are, feelings are versus the other person. Because mm-hmm. what they try to do is they try to bring their thoughts and feelings in front of yours so you just see that. Yeah. And now yours are just blocked. Mm-hmm. So what you need to do is you just need to pull away, sit with yours, so when you come back, you have had time to think about what you were feeling and what you experienced, and you can stand firmly in that. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. No, you're so right. I feel like in that moment. I mean, I get so, it. In that moment, you know, it's, you're yeah, like, I mean, the feelings. I need an answer. You said it exactly right. Like, I feel like I need a solution right then and there. Yeah. Because they're doing a really good job of gaslighting you in that sense. You yeah. know what I mean? You're like, no, you feel like you need to work it out. And I don't normally feel that way. I also you feel like it's mean? being dangled in front of you. Like, yeah. oh, a solution is here. If you were to just agree with them, yes. everything would be fixed. Might as yeah. well just agree with them. Whereas if you were to take that time apart, maybe the solution, it would take a little bit longer for that resolution to happen. Yeah. But at least maybe you know that you're doing right by yourself and that you're not letting this overly aggressive personality or gaslighter yeah. take charge of your reality. Yeah. Because they're taking charge when they aren't allowing you to pause. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like you, you're realizing you need a pause, but they're bulldozing over it. And that's a problem. Exactly. You know? Everyone's brain operates differently. We're all yeah. on different time. Like, we all value different timings when it comes to certain things in life. When going through different situations. Some people like it more fast-paced. Others need more time. And, you know, I feel like that is something that is a tactic that gaslighters use. Like, yeah. they understand that they're really good at, like you said, bulldozing over you. And as long as you don't have the self-confidence to speak out and tell them, I need more time, they will win this argument. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll walk away feeling defeated and sad and like your point wasn't heard. Yeah. And that and that's once the again, most frustrating once thing again, ever. their opinion and their emotions were right and more valuable than yours. That's actually what it is. 
at the end of the day. It's like you ultimately say that their feelings were more valuable than yours. Which isn't the case. It's not the case at all. Ever. And it just sucks too because I feel like in that moment, you're heated and you feel like your emotions are at the highest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. You know? And then all of a sudden it's simmered down. They're like, shh. Let me tell you how I feel. It's so fucked up. Fucked up. It's pretty fucked up. Who taught people how to gaslight? That's also what I'm I mean. don't it's know. Terrible. Were people some, some were born gaslighters? Some were born this some way. Were, <laughs> some were taught. <laughs> no, truly, because I actually feel like some men learn to be gaslighters. I mean, I actually watching know their dads do this it. This is a fact. So. Yes, definitely their dads. And then also, I feel like. Well, there are do videos out Everybody here. Everybody do it. We're like, this is how you win a woman over. Ew. And this is how you win an argument. No. I hate that. Yeah, <laughs> dude. There's videos. I log on YouTube sometimes and I see some of the videos. I'm like, what? I see the titles so of sexist. like, yeah, they're very sexist. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Who li- who listens to this? Truly. No, I can't. I can't. We can't get into it this time. No. But maybe we will next time. There's a lot of toxic, toxic platforms in terms of dating. Yes. Oh, my God. Lort. Lort. I feel like you can get caught up in a... No, for real. In a cloud of it. Is there like a... Like someone needs to create an account where they just go to these... (laughs) It's like a reaction video to those, but more so like it just... It doesn't have to be long. They're just like, nope. (laughs) Wrong. Doesn't work. You're trash. <laughs> right. Stop talking. <laughs> Your relationship's going to fail. Mm, literally. Stop. No. Are, <laughs> if you have all this advice about dating, why are you single? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, though. Oh, my god. And gosh. I'm not saying, you know, single people can't get good advice. If they're always no. single and never, ever put themselves out there, and are just out here playing the game all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, probably shouldn't be taking dating advice from, I mean, from men like that. Yeah, honestly. If you've never been in a committed relationship. Yeah. I do I have care. a little bit harder time taking advice from you because what you know about that? I don't even have a harder time. I will not take advice from you. you know about you. that? Yeah, you don't know anything about that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Again, I'm not taking cooking advice from someone has, that has never stepped in the kitchen. Like, you know what Facts. I mean? Like, I'm just not. I don't care how good you make <laughs> it, it look. I don't care <laughs> how many pots and pans you have in your fresh vegetables. You have never stepped in there. I don't care. Right. I don't care. It can be the, all the organic shit you fucking talk about. I don't care. It don't matter. No. Mm. Okay, so it's tourist season, obviously, mm-hmm. and I wanted to end the video with something sweet, something nice. Something sweet? Um, for both of us. Okay. You cute. know, Taurus is ruled by the second house, Mm -hmm. and that is the house of your value. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be cool if both of us can answer, like, a couple of things that we find valuable within ourselves. Oh, okay. I like that. Um, And since, you know, this is your first time hearing the question, maybe I can go first. So you have Mm -hmm, time mm -hmm, to sit mm -hmm. on it. Unless you're ready, then we can go, too. Um, No, you go first so so I can think about what, you know. Okay. You want to let it marinate. I need a little time. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Okay. mm -hmm. So. Um, I would say one of the things that I find valuable in myself a lot is my dedication. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, Scorpio, <laughs> <laughs> I don't do things half-assed. And although sometimes that makes me tired in life because I feel like I push myself a little too far and I still need to find that balance, but I do feel like my dedication and how much of myself I give to the people and the things that I love or just things that I feel like I want in my life, I deeply value that part of me. Yeah. You know, because you, in life, you don't want to be scared to tell people that you love them and go after the things that you love. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I used to think that maybe I had to keep my card to my chest a little bit more and that maybe I was too passionate and that maybe I did tell people that I love them too soon or like was way too into my hobby, like more than other people. And like the older I got, the more I valued this part of myself. Like, yes, I do love this thing. Yes, I love this person. Yes, I'm going all in in my passion project. But like, that's me. I'm a dedicated ass individual Mm -hmm. and like nothing about that is going to change. Like no matter what part of my personality shines, I'm always going to be dedicated to the things and the people that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't need to play it cool. 
because that's just not in my personality. Like no. all I want to do is be truly be dedicated to the things that I love. Mm-hmm. That shit makes me happy, you know? And it makes me happy if someone else can look at me and be like, oh my God, she's not scared to tell the world that she loves these things or that she's passionate about that. Yeah, I'm not. And you shouldn't be either. Yeah. You know? And it's scary thinking about those things being taken away from you and people knowing how much you love that person or love that thing. And then people see it being taken away from you and they'll think that, oh my God, like she's going to go through it now. But like, that's almost fine with me. Like, that's fine. People can know what I love. People yeah. can know what I'm dedicated to. At the end of the day, that's my journey. Hell yeah. I mean, I think it makes you strong. You Thank know you. what I mean? And <laughs> powerful. And I feel like the people who really fuck with that energy gravitate to you. Yeah. You know? And absolutely. like the people who want that energy will gravitate to you too, but you're quick to see that they can't actually hang. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And if I feel even just one inkling of being judged for liking something too much or being passionate about something too much or being dedicated to something too much, yeah, I know you're not for me. Because when you're passionate about shit, you know other people are passionate. Or when you're passionate about shit, you respect other people that are passionate about their craft. Yeah. Or the people that they love or whatever. Yeah. Like I said, I just, I don't do things half-assed. It's not in my nature. And mm. I'm never going to start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As your best friend of uh, 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 10 years. Mm. <laughs> it's our anniversary this yeah, year, Yeah, we're guys. having our 10-year anniversary this year. <laughs> <laughs> I can truly say um, that this is this one is, of your me. <laughs> store qualities. And it, it is honey. you, honey. It, it is. is. It is. Passion mixed with dedication. It's true. Uh-huh. 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 I work. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> she works. Get she your ass for the up and work. She... <laughs> I'm not gonna... I can't crash you, but it's just so good. <laughs> so I can't. Good. Get your ass up and work, bitch. It's so good. Okay, I your I turn. I really love when you say it too, <laughs> for whatever reason. Like you've said that, it a couple well, times. Because yeah. she says it like <laughs> Kim says it with her straight face. Like I say it yeah, as yeah. like, get your ass over work. work. <laughs> <laughs> like what would you do? Like it's different if a boss comes <laughs> into work, you know, and he's like, get your ass up and work. Yes. <laughs> but if he's like, hey, get your ass up and work, <laughs> <laughs> which would you like more? My version. <laughs> I like your version. Oh, you're a little dance party. Yeah. A five minute dance no! party. <laughs> Severance. If y'all watch Severance, you know. You know. You would know. Watch okay. Severance, Apple TV Plus. Best show I've watched, Maya. Thank you for the recommendation. Yes. Truly, like, I think Ellen it's going to go in my top five. Right? Of life. Yes. Because you know how it's- much I hate capitalism Good. and yes. corporate culture. And people who fight, I love people who fight for justice. Right. Guys, watch and it. surprises. Oh my gosh. Just so good. So Good. There's nothing like it. No, out it's, right it's, now. It literally makes me horny. You like, know what I mean? It makes my Capricorn rising. <sighs> you know? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All okay. right. Tell us, Tori season things. What is one of the things you find deeply valuable within you? Mm. Okay. So I think. I mean, there's really a couple of things. I mean, yeah. I have a couple of things. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Okay, I think the one that I will say, though, is um, creativity. Oh, hell yeah. I feel yeah. like I bring creativity and flexibility and new ideas to all different facets of my life. Like, mm-hmm. yes, our YouTube, also my other job that currently pays my bills, but hopefully this will be paying my bills soon. <laughs> and It will. <laughs> you know. And if you just subscribe and like the video. <laughs> right, <you> know, just <laughs> Leave us a review on Apple, Spotify. I feel like I'm a very forward thinking kind of person. So I may see a system that is currently in place and I'm like, how can we make this better? Hell you know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like I'm always thinking like, how can I make this better? Sometimes <laughs> it's good. <and> sometimes <laughs> it's bad. But ultimately I feel like it's working out for me because I'm doing it, it to make my experience better in life. And to me being creative and bringing creativity to things that I feel like aren't working anymore – is makes me really happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's something that is very true to me. And you can always see from when I was a very young girl to this age now, like I have 
always been creative. I've always been really expressive. Yeah. And that's something that I really value about myself. And people, I feel like sometimes have tried to like shit on it. Of course. You know, probably not jealous. Like, right. Not everyone likes the way I express myself or my art or whatever it may be. And that's fine. But I feel like as I've gotten older, I've really just loved the – I say like the art the fact of just creating you yeah. know what I mean the state of just creating because mm-hmm. it makes me feel good it makes me feel You're putting renewed. something out there yeah yeah and it's like I feel like my sad ass it's like it's a new experience yeah. you know what I mean like I'm creating something new and you don't know where experience. it's gonna go exactly. I feel like you enjoy that part of it too right and again building like I feel like I'm so growth minded and when you're creative it's like you put out this idea can somebody add to it like yeah. how can we collaborate together to too. make it stronger better yeah. mm-hmm. I absolutely love that you picked this one because it's so freaking true like honestly Maya has taught me so much when it comes to flexibility and you know I feel like sometimes I can get really really stuck on something but you have this way of being like well let's get creative and let's think of a new way to fix this or how can we do it like this so we get this solution you know yeah. what I mean and Sometimes I just look at things in such a straight line, but sometimes I feel like you are really good at bringing new creative solutions in ways that I couldn't even imagine. And sometimes, not sometimes, I feel like most of the time when I'm with you, I don't know how shit's going to go in the best way. Yeah. And as a fixed sign, like, I think I was blessed to have a Sag as a best friend because you have just shown me that the possibilities are endless. Aww. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I love that only because I feel like your point is the opposite and fits so perfectly in the sense that, like, you bring such stability around me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yes, I can be all over here with my ideas and creativity. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, I know that you're always going to be consistent. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. like, you're always – going to bring this passion and energy and dedication you mm-hmm. know like I can't always say the same for me yeah. you know what I mean my creativity comes and goes you know yeah. but I know that you are always there oh, I love with so that much. energy and passion and like I value that so much about you thank I mean, you, you know this yeah me. I do like, uh. and truly I feel like <laughs> without you I wouldn't be able to to think so freely like sometimes I just get too in my head sometimes about like well it should be like this and you're like well, why don't we just try it like this? You yeah. know what I mean? And like, like and I know you're all. like that in <laughs> other aspects of your life, yeah. not just in our friendship, but like, I know that that's just who you are. Like, yeah, it'll bug you that it didn't work out in that way, but you're really good at bouncing back and being like, okay, how can we try it another way? Yeah. Truly, that is so dope. I mean, because I don't you feel forget like, it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, I feel like I don't let, I don't want how do I say this? It's like, if something's bad, I don't want that to be the end experience. The end all be all about it. It's your Jupiterian (laughs) optimism. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to end it on a bad note. Right. Let's let's figure out how to keep the high going. Right. How can we create something to make this better? Absolutely. To live the way that we want to live, to do what we want to do. You know? Truly. The possibilities are endless. And I feel like I love with creativity, it's like, Sometimes things have to break. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't even look at what how things used to be and just try something completely new. You know? And I feel like that's very liberating. It is. And, you know, <laughs> it kind of ties back to the first thing we talked about on this podcast, the eclipses. You know? Yes. Like, shit might pop off and shit might break. But at the end of the day, like you said, that could be very liberating. Yeah. Like, comfort sometimes feels so good. But you are so addicted to that comfort that you don't realize that you're miserable. Maybe you're just addicted to being miserable because it's so comfortable because it's what you've been feeling for a long time. Yeah. Maybe you haven't experienced happiness and pure joy in so long. But at the end of the day, you have to be willing to let go of the old to make room for the new. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because new good things want to come. They do, but you got to make room for it. Yeah. You got to fucking make room for it. And they won't come if you don't. You can't have the past comforts and then like the all the things you've been asking for too. (laughs) Ah! No, it's so true. You got to make room for it. It's so true. So when you feel like your ass is kicked (laughs) after all of this, remember that you can create something from this energy too. Absolutely. You know? You just made, made room for it. Yes. But that's the thing with loss. When you lose things, you can't help but just look at that empty space. Yeah. And look at it as something that used to be here. Yeah. So I encourage you to change that mindset. And instead of looking at it as this placeholder for the thing that used to be, as actually room for something new. 
Yes. This isn't an empty space for something I lost. This is an empty space for something that's about to come into my life. Yes. And well, also reapply that dedication and energy that you had for whatever was that was no longer serving you and apply it to what can be new. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The energy's there. Right. And don't that will it, actually. Don't let it fester inside of you. Right. Into nothing. You know what I mean? Into right. anger and resentment because it was taken from you. Right. Transition it out into a new thing. Yes. Because yeah. you still have the power. You do. You do. The universe has the power and your power, <laughs> and we need you to mix it together. Uh-huh. <laughs> the power. Exactly. <laughs> All right, lovely people. Thank you for kicking it with your girls. What did you think of this conversation? Did you guys like it? Yeah. If you liked it, comment down below. If you're listening on you know, any streaming platform, go to our YouTube and comment. Like, We really want to hear from you guys. I feel like I'm not hearing enough. I know. And I it kind of makes more. me a little sad. I because, see y'all watching. Yeah, I see you guys watching, shit. but you guys aren't interacting. And like, I really want to hear what you guys think of the shit we say because we be saying a whole lot of shit. A lot of things. And I want to know how y'all feel about it, like truly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, we have a new moon solar eclipse coming up this Saturday. I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like I said, just continue to take it easy. Yes. Yeah. We love you guys so we much. We love you guys so, so much. Don't forget... Sarah already said to comment down below, but yeah. we're going to link our socials around here. We post our podcast every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. We post our YouTubes every Monday and Thursday. Make sure you follow us on our socials. Mm-hmm. And we love you guys so much. Keep so being beautiful much. out here during tour season. Yes. Feel the vibe. Bye. Bye. Bye.